the lessons for Palm Sunday. Speak about Jesus, not just as a king, but also as a servant. I find it fascinating that the new Pope is choosing on Monday, Thursday to conduct his communion service in a prison. Hmm. And he will be washing the feet of 12 inmates, wow. recreating what Jesus did that night when he washed the feet of his disciples. Apparently this is not the first time the Pope has done that. He's done it previously when he was a cardinal. But he sets the example for us. That's why he took the name of Francis in name honor of Francis of Assisi to recognize the need to be a servant, the need to consider the poor and the weak among us. And so it is our lessons this morning not only talk about Jesus as the king, but also Jesus as servant. And we hear that in the Old Testament lesson where Isaiah describes for us in one of those passages we've heard before about the suffering servant, one who's willing to endure abuse for the sake of the people he loves. From the writings of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, beginning at verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint. And I know that I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Here ends the first lesson. Our psalm for this morning <coughs> is an alternate for this morning. It's the psalm associated with Palm Sunday. And there is a reference in there to Jesus, to a stone that builders rejected, but which has become the cornerstone. Our psalm is printed on page 272 in the front of the hymnal. And we're going to read responsibly one verse at a time. I'll take the odd, you take the even. We'll do verses one and two, and then 19 through 29. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the, the gate, gate of the Lord. Lord. He, he who is righteous may, may enter. enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The, the same stone, stone which the builders rejected has become, become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On, On the day the Lord has acted, acted we will rejoice and be glad. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us for a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. We've been hearing from Paul's letter to the Philippians for the past several weeks. The passage we have this morning is actually one of the most popular verses and portions of Scripture for us 
in our common lectionary. It's used in Advent time, it's used in Christmas, it's used during Lent, and it's used elsewhere throughout the year. And on a day when we talk about receiving Christ into Jerusalem as King, the extension is obvious. Are you receiving him into your heart as King? Paul gives some very practical advice to the Philippian congregation. He says, if you want to have Jesus as your king, then you must think like Jesus. You must have the same mentality and approach that he did. And continuing that motif of the king who is the servant, Paul describes in what really was a hymn for the congregation, how Jesus put aside his divine power and majesty and instead took upon our form and in so doing was obedient to carrying out God's will for our salvation. From the letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. St. Paul writes, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the second lesson. In our gospel this morning, we hear again that same passage we had in our opening litany, the story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and being proclaimed by the people as God's long-awaited Messiah. We rise to the good news. This is the Gospel according to Luke, the 19th chapter, beginning at the 28th verse. <clears throat> Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany, at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a colt there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Tell him, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, his owners asked, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and put Jesus on top of it. As they went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. We'll sing.